So I haven't seen this one. I saw him just release this. I'm happy that Fireship is back. Let's get this thing going. 2023 has been a wild year. My bank collapsed. Elon bought Twitter. Almost all my friends got laid off. All my favorite crypto bros are going to jail. Tesla successfully mated the DeLorean with a Pontiac Aztec, bringing us the Cybertruck. And ChatGPT made me obsolete. But all this good news pales in comparison to the changes web developers have... Those are all things that happened. Like, like that perfectly does sum up 2023. You know, they're all going to jail. All the crypto, all the rug, the official rug pull, rug pull has been pulled. And now look at us. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. I would say that the Sam, the, the Sam Bank, Freed Bankman situation, SB, SFB, or SB, I, I can never say his name correct. There's a dash and there's like a lot of them. Um, there's too many names for one human to have. Uh, Sam. My favorite part about that entire saga was the fact that they had Wang write a backdoor, backdoor Wang in the code. And then not only did he do that, not only did he write it, he like put nice commis commit messages like backdoor Wang coming in with a good old fashioned backdoor. And you're just like, damn, why you got to put that in the commit messages, Sam? Sam, why you why you letting backdoor Wang do that to you? Like he just like just 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 straight up documented backdooring. It was beautiful. Mwah. It was beautiful. All right, let's keep on going. Seen in JavaScript land over the last year, where almost every framework decided to reinvent itself in 2023. In today's yep. video, we'll look. Yes, 2023 was the year that everybody became a Next.js framework. What are you, Svelte? How about Svelte Kit? Hey, what are you, Solid? Solid starter, whatever it's called. Hey, what what are you, Vue? I don't know what Vue's is, but I'm sure Vue has one. What are you, Angular? You have signals now. You know, like, I don't know what it all was, but there's there's been a lot of them that are all doing the same thing. Nuxt, what are you, Vue? You Nuxtin, okay? We're Nuxting out here. Look at 10 recent changes. I don't know why I turn it into, like, an old Hollywood Italiano mobster. What are you? What's going on? What? Have you talked to Fat Tony about that? Like, I don't know why, what's going on here, but all of a sudden, it's just like the moment I start talking about JavaScript frameworks, I, I turn into a stereotypical mobster. is to JavaScript that you may have missed. Every year, new language features get yep. standardized in ECMAScript, at which point they're implemented in browsers. Yep. One of my favorite new features this year is object group by. Imagine you have an array of objects where this. the objects share a similar schema. These yeah. might be records from a database yeah. where every object has a field of age. You can use group by to separate the children from the adults by defining a function that groups anyone under 21 into children and anyone over that into adults. The end result is an object organized into groups. That's a nice little utility but when I find myself using I don't know how I feel about that one I, I'm still trying to figure out like why you know you know there's like there's like see, there's squeal you've heard of squeal right and you can do like group eyes and, and stuff in your database which is written in, in in a fast language. And so when I see this, it's like more data processing doesn't sound better than less data processing in JavaScript. That's useful for Node.js and no squeal. Yeah, no squeal was largely a mistake. Just saying. Over that into adults. Just the end result saying. is an object organized into groups. That's a nice God. little utility, but one I find myself using even more often is array to sorted, along with two spliced and two reversed. Job this is hilarious. I love the fact that because JavaScript is a language in which you don't know if a function mutates, you now have reverse and two reversed. Ah. Beautiful. JavaScript already had methods for sort and reverse, but the problem is that they mutate the original array in place. And that's confusing because other this. methods like map and filter don't do that. Instead, they copy the array and return a new one. With these methods, you can now sort, Beautiful. reverse, and splice Dude, an array. By did we not get like a... Oh my goodness. They should do two map that does mutating. Like, I feel like that would be the only way that JavaScript could remain so consistently inconsistent that the only way to do this is to make mutating ones called two map and two filter. Like to me that that's the way. That's the way if they're going to commit to this consistently inconsistent behavior, that's the way.
That is the way. Treating the original as an immutable value, which tends to be the more sane way to write your code. Web developers also got some cool updates. In I don't know if it's more sane. I love, I, I you know, I, immutability is definitely a hot topic among you young you young JS devs. It's just that maybe a better language for it would be would be nicer. You guys just want to be a bunch of Haskell nerds without being virgins. And so I think there's like a problem here. It's like you want all the benefits of Haskell without the best benefit, the virginity part. In the form of brand new HTML elements. By the like way, that is going to make the entire Haskell community, all 21 of them, super upset. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to appear in a white paper, the proximity of virginity and Haskell, where they disprove my theory. There's going to be graphs. There's going to be an abstract. It's going to be so amazing. Dude, if you, if you actually look at it, it's actually two standard deviations more likely for virginity. But if you think about it, the, this isn't a normal distribution. It's actually an AB distribution of virginity. Okay, it's different. They actually go into two different categories. It's post-virgin Haskellness or pre-virgin Haskellness. Okay, you really need to understand the difference. Dude, it's going to be so good. It's going to be so good. The search tag is a more semantic way to define a search box on a website, which can replace the more generic form tag. That's oh, nice, but the dialogue element is way more powerful, which allows you to create actual modal dialogues and then control them with JavaScript using built-in methods like show modal and close. Another nice that okay finally thank you for just i really would like more leaning into like the first off models are modals models uh however you say it uh i feel like they're a mistake to begin with almost exclusively you create a website in which you cannot replicate that state i've largely thought them to be bad uh I'm happy that you now have like specific HTML around it. At least that does put some sanity back into things that this this really crazy odd behavior can be specified in a more nice way. I'm happy about that. I'm curious about how this works. It's quite old. I don't know about it. Sorry. I don't keep up with the HTML. You know, like obviously we read that one where it showed how stupid we all were with HTML. Like, I just don't keep track of HTML stuff. A mistake? Uh, we have marquee, but not dialogue? I just, just saying. Nice utility, but that brings us to index three. After years of begging and pleading with Apple, iOS finally allows push notifications to come from web apps. And that's a huge win for the 0.0001% nice. of website users who actually allow websites to send them push notifications. Yep. Which yeah, that's me. I do it every time this thing shows up. I'm like, ah, 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 ah. No, thank you. It is most likely your grandpa who accidentally clicked the allow button and now has no idea how to turn it off. But now it's time to talk about the fun stuff, okay. frameworks. The world's most popular JavaScript framework, Next.js, is an entirely different framework than it was last year, thanks to the app directory, which became stable in May with version 13.4. The most notable difference is that you can now fetch data directly inside React components, thanks to server- I'm very happy that at least it's trying to encourage you to write squeal. This is good. I do love that people, like I think template strings are interesting. It's kind of a cool way to allow behavior inside of a template uh, data. I like that. I think we can all agree that that's pretty nice. Um, I'm curious what this actually looks like. How does it, I've never implemented a template string, so you must get the chance to, pl uh, to like do a mutation on this data before it gets put into the actual templating. So, neat. Neat, but about that squeal injection. No, see, no, 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 no. Stop saying that. You, if you if you say the word squeal injection, you're just being a dumb dumb. Okay. Always ask a question before you just claim an outcome. Right. That's that's what you need to do. Always ask a question before you claim an outcome. Just once, maybe twice, maybe three times. components, which are React components that can run on the server. The reception to the app directory has been somewhat mixed. On one hand, it has a lot of awesome new features and can simplify your code, but many have complained about it feeling rushed and half-baked, kind of like the way they launch video games nowadays where they just get something out the door, then patch <laughs> it up over the next few years. Did, what, why is this Western man twerking on this guy's boot? What is this? I don't want boot twerk video game, okay? That's not what I want. I don't want this. 
It's not even twerking. I don't even know what this is. Grinding. We're grinding. We're, we're shoe grinding. We're sh shoe shining. Did I just did I just make up a new dance move? The shoe shine. I think I might have. We're gonna call that the shoe shine, babies. Uh, let's go on. People have complained about having to use the use client directive everywhere due to breaking existing React yep. libraries. People have complained about the slow dev server, which is powered by Rust, which is weird because anything powered by Rust is supposed to be fast. And people have compared its new <laughs> server actions feature to PHP, one of the most offensive slurs you can make against a JavaScript framework. But the biggest issue is that running Next.js is fairly hard to do correctly outside of Vercel. And that I, I've heard this is this has been a bit exaggerated. Uh, like the thing that makes Vercel really useful is that they 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 spawn up all the edging. You get to be a public edge lord. Like you get to do all the stuff that you need, and they they handle all the infrastructure. Whereas running Next.js, I heard it's pretty easy. A throat in a Docker image and blah 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 blah. Like I hear it's it's been pretty exaggerated. Uh, the thing is, is that running Next.js and having Vercel are very different things. And so I think the problem, it's, it's express, right? Yeah. It's like, it's not like something wildly out of control. It, they just read your directory and write an express server that maps to your directory. Like, is it really that wild? There's some other things, obviously. Uh, but I'm just saying like, is it really that crazy? That's led to projects like Open Next that take on the tedious job of getting it to run anywhere. Next is well, still. No, no, that's that. Yeah, it's it's more that it's 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 doing the whole like serverless part. I could I bet you in an afternoon I could make a Next.js Docker niceness, or in five minutes finding the Docker image that exists that you just run right. But that's then you then you're you're manually running the server, and people don't want to do that in this day and age. They want someone else to, they want to pay more money for somebody else to do it. The dominant meta framework, but Nux.js in the Vue ecosystem also had a lot of cool updates Everyone in 2023, awesome. like its dev tools. These Press one in the chat if you think Vue is amazing. People seem to love Vue. Every time I hear anyone talk about Vue, they seem to just love it. A lot of ones. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. It just seems so surprising. People seem to love Vue. Tools run directly in the browser and make it much easier to understand the structure of a complex application. <laughs> if this is your application and you don't immediately think I done fucked up, I don't know what you, I, I like. I don't know what's going through your head, right? Yeah, this is this is just how you write client side applications. This is there's no other possible way. There's no other possible way to write them. It does this. It, this looks like Obsidian, but it's not. It does actually look like it's not Obsidian. But one thing you may not know about Nuxt is that many of its components are available through the unified JavaScript tools ecosystem. Like if you don't care about Vue.js and just want a web server, you can use Nitro to build a fast server with plain JavaScript. What's funny is I think the Vue.js ecosystem has changed the least in 2023, and as a consequence, it feels like the most stable and predictable ecosystem. Nice. Svelte, on the other hand, got ruined in 2023. In a shocking <laughs> announcement a couple months ago, Svelte announced a new feature called Runes that will dramatically change the developer experience in version 5. Instead of defining reactive variables with let, there's now this thing called a rune, which is essentially a compiler macro that tells the Svelte compiler this value is reactive. Svelte is also getting rid of the dollar sign colon syntax and stores with runes like derived and effect. The initial it probably response just makes it a lot easier to honestly the compiler and what you can do is probably just a lot easier than having this whole like using labels and running blocks and stuff like that. Like I, I think that it, it does make things easier because you need less of a compiler now. Like this this exists now. This is just JavaScript as opposed to conf like translating a scope block plus a label into, well, an, an effect, right? I, I so like what I, I, actually, mixed, I actually like With some users lot. feeling like these changes make Svelte look a lot more like React, which is the type of developer experience they're trying to get away from. But on the other hand, a lot of people love these changes and see them as necessary yeah. to evolve the framework in the right direction. Think, as I a hardcore a user of Svelte myself, I'm waiting for the final release of version 5 before I form an opinion. The award for the most changed framework in 2023, though, goes to Angular. It Signals, baby. Let's go. It has a long list of new features, but the most notable change... By the way, uh, up to 90% faster runtime built in Control Fluid. I don't whenever someone says something's faster I just don't believe it until you till you measure it 
changes for Angular I haters out there would be the new template syntax, which provides a cleaner way to handle conditionals and loops, oh, replacing nice. things like ngif and ng4. In addition, Angular has also adopted signals, much like all the other frameworks out there, nice. and brings a new feature called deferrable views, which enables declarative like lazy suspense, loading right? directly in a template. But most importantly, Angular has a brand new logo, which was really the only thing holding it back from being the world's most popular framework in the past. A lot of crazy changes on the front end, but on the <laughs> back end, Node.js has been quietly getting better. With Node.js yeah. version 20, it released a new permissions model, which improves security by controlling which features a script has access to. Very oh. much similar to what... Yeah, I was about to say, that sounds like Dino. Dino has, like, kind of built-in permissions and all that, so... Okay, cool, cool. Dino changing the uh, ecosystem. Good job. Dino released a few years ago. And then with the release of Node 21, it introduced its own WebSocket client, which is based on the WebSocket API in the browser. The biggest disruptor with backend JavaScript in 2023, though, is Bun. It's a new JavaScript. Interesting that they did that because uh, micro, because mi micro WebSockets already exist, you WebSockets, and they're, th that's what Bun uses, and they're really well written and they're fast. Right? I like that. Like, I, I think we should try to go towards something that's that's good. You know what I mean? Runtime written in Zig that came out with an awesome developer experience and some wild claims about performance. And quite a few bugs were discovered after the initial release, Stragers. but it still yep. remains a promising new way to do backend JavaScript in the future. And with that, we've looked at 10 different ways JavaScript changed in 2023. But I almost I like forgot that. the biggest one of all, HTMX, the framework that showed us that anyone can capture the imagination of the JavaScript ecosystem if you shitpost and meme hard enough on Twitter. But most importantly, as I've shown here with science, yes. HTMX can actually eliminate a ton of JavaScript compared yes. to the status quo approach taken by all the major frameworks. It's yes. the ideal JavaScript framework for the JavaScript haters. And that's why today I'm thrilled and honored to present the HTMX team with, with the JavaScript Framework of the Year yes. award, which is basically the Nobel Prize of JavaScript. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. That is so good. I think HTMX deserves it. HTMX deserves it. I absolutely loved it. The name is the HTMXogen.